Hello, in this episode, we're going to look at the Java MMO RPG inventory implementation, and in particular, we'll look at equipping items. So in chapter 13, I've created a little basic inventory implementation where I was able to create new items, populate the world with some of these items and start picking them up, seeing them in the inventory and also dropping them. So now we're also going to be able to start equipping those items as well. So I've uh, basically modified the server code, which uh, is available on GitHub. So that'll, the link will be in the description and I've added support for these equipment items. So the changes were quite large. So it's like 50, 60 files of changes. Um, and that was also because I was extending some of the item capabilities um, and creating the, the slots behind them. Uh, so I'm not going to go in, uh, in detail about each and every file that I've created, but sort of from a high level, uh, what are the purpose of this um, structure design, you know, the system design, um, and why I've uh, chosen some of the things that I did. Uh, so I'll also go through them a little bit in detail in this video as well. And um, yeah, obviously, like, other people can design this a little bit differently. So it really depends on your requirements of your game server. So I've used a NoSQL database, so MongoDB. So you'll find that some of these uh, um, columns are essentially denormalized, right? So in Postgres or MySQL, where it's an SQL database, you'll have your data normalized, right? So you're going to have the IDs to pull the data. So here it's denormalized. And what that means is that I'll effectively have copies of some of the data. Um, and this is really to improve the, uh, the, the speed, basically, of the reads, right? Um, so that instead of pulling multiple uh, tables, you just pull it from one. This does mean that your writes are a bit slower, uh, but you do a lot more reads, which is why this is sort of still more performant. Okay, so uh, the key tables are, is this items, which is your general base item that you're, you've got in the in the game and then you have to create the item instance so the item instance is a unique instance of that item right um and originally i thought maybe the character item would have been the instance and that would have been enough now the reason why that wasn't enough is uh if you want to support for instance dropping items right so for example when you drop an item you want to refer to some sort of an item instance now you also need that because of um, if you wanted to modify your item right so imagine if your game supported things like enchantment of items or any sort of modifications like awakening the item whatever you don't want to modify the global item right you just want to modify the instance of that item so Effectively, you pick up an item, it's a base item, there's no modifications to it. Then, you know, you through some crafting or whatever, you can modify some of the, those properties. Uh, they belong to the character item, which is effectively a unique instance there. But then if you decided to drop that item, so again, if you needed to support that functionality, you, you need to sort of re remove this character item, like the character name would be null here, and still refer to the item instance, and you'll have yourself a dropped item um, parameter right so that's kind of uh, the justification for the item instance which is shared across multiple states I and mean, in some games you know like you can't actually drop items you just have to either delete it sell it or trade it in which case this character item would always be sufficient right but if you wanted to support dropping it as well um you, you should have this i mean alternatively what you can do is just copy this whole item and bring it over to the dropped item so that you copy the entire parameter across so there are still other ways of doing it right so with programming you can do many things right so this is not like the universal way of doing it like this is just one of the ways of doing it okay so this is the like i said the item the base item item instance that you can modify and we've briefly covered the character item which is basically all the the items that the character has so this is part of their inventory and this is essentially connected to the inventory component right so the inventory is effectively a collection of items but it also has a couple of other parameters like you know how much gold you have or the max size that you can uh, have of the character items right so that's effectively your inventory there uh, and equipped items is the new concept here. So you could, for instance, have on the character item, just a Boolean field of equipped, right? So one of the reasons I've created a, a whole different table for it is to basically handle this on a separate service. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is because you can have some items which are a bit more complex than others for equipping. So for instance, if you have just a normal weapon, right? So a one-handed sword, this can go into the one slot. Now you have a two-handed uh, weapon, this will take two slots up, right? So um, how do you deal with some of this logic? 
uh, it's just easier if you can have a separate entity to sort of manage it, right? So that's the purpose of this equipped items. What will happen is that when you equip the item, we'll remove this location of the location in the inventory. So it, it effectively becomes equipped and we generate a new equipped items uh, slot. And, um, you know, you, you do some other validations to check, is there anything already equipped? Uh, so you, you can pull that data. If it is, you can re remove the entry of those and create the new one. Um, and that's kind of it. Now, bear in mind, these guys over here, so weapon, shield, helm, chest, etc. These are not actually tables, right? This is a representation of how can we evaluate what are the item categories or item types uh, using Java. And they stem out of the category from items. And likewise for the slots, right? So I'm going to show you in Java what they look like. Perhaps before I go into the Java code, I'll give you a demonstration of using this over API. So in this episode, we're looking at uh, the Java implementation. And then the next one, I'm going to start integrating this with Unreal Engine. And I'll actually start being able to equip those items. So just for context, you know, if I show you what these uh, slots look like. So if this is my inventory, uh, right, so you've got uh, all of these slots, right? So you have a helm slot, you have a chest slot, you have a belt slot. Then there's your weapon slot, your shield slot, etc. Uh, so all of these guys are your slots, and we'll have items here that we'll be able to equip and place them onto those slots. So that's what we'll cover in the next episode. And right now, I'm going to show you uh, what it will look like from Postman uh, over API, essentially. And um, yeah, let's get started. So what I've done is I've run the tests, which cleared all the data. So I've started my server up, and um, to begin with, I'll start creating some items. So uh, I've I've created a little script, if you will, uh, to basically create an item of each category. So for example, we've got a weapon here, uh, we've got a shield here, uh, a belt, you know, or cape, etc. So I'm going to create these items. These are base items that now exist in the database. Uh, so th those are created. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start spawning some of these items in the map, right? So conceptually speaking, right? So I'm going to say, uh, drop this ma uh, item on map one at this location. So I'm going to drop uh, an item for the weapon and a shield. So if I click get nearby items, uh, so again, uh, the threshold there is 1000, I should be able to see those two items. And again, you know, if I change this to uh, a different place, so if my character moved, I no longer see those items, right? So if I put this at 2000, I should see this item again. Okay, so there's two items that are dropped, the weapon and the shield. So I go ahead and I pick those up. Before I pick them up, I need to generate the um, inventory for my character, which will be done automatically through character creation. And now I have myself this little inventory, right? So there's my character items at the moment, there's nothing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up the item. Okay, there it is, I've picked up the item and uh, this item will now be gone. So the small axe will be gone. And now there's just a, a wooden buckler. Okay, so I'm going to pick up this item as well. So now I have two items in my inventory, right? So there's the first one and there's the, the second one, the wooden buckler, right? So if I minimize this, there's the two items that I've just picked up. Okay, you can also see this in your inventory, right? So the small X. And now the new addition is that we can take this item instance ID from my inventory and we can start equipping that item. So here, uh, all we need to provide for equipping the item is the instance ID of that item, which is the unique in, um, index. And uh, there we go. So we get a response to say, okay, now you've equipped this item, okay? So if you say get equipped items, you have just one equipped item, which is the small X. And it basically tells you that it's uh, going into the weapon slot, okay? Uh, what we'll do is we'll also equip the buckler. So if you get yourself the inventory, the item still exists in your inventory, it's just not part of your normal slot. So the location is not uh, specified, which means that it doesn't take up one of your inventory slots because it goes into your um, equipped item slot instead, okay? Um, we could do this differently, like I said, like there's many ways of achieving the same thing. Uh, now what we'll do is we'll equip the second item, which is the wooden buckler. So provide the item instance ID here. And there we go. So now we've equipped the wooden buckler as well. So if we say get equipped items, we should see two items. 
uh, the buckler and the shield, uh, the axe. So uh, the other thing is that we can also unequip these items as well. Okay, so again, just need to provide the item instance ID. Try to keep this relatively simple for the APIs. And when you unequip the item, I actually return the inventory. Perhaps I'll do the same for the equip item. So maybe when I'm uh, integrating this with Unreal Engine, if it makes sense, I'll probably uh, just return the inventory instead. Okay, so now if I get equipped items, there should just be the one item. And you can see I'm only equipping the shield here. So uh, I can do the same just to follow through. So if I just change the ID here, and now I'm essentially not equipping any items. And if I get myself uh, the inventory, uh, the location should be populated again. So let's see, uh, there, there it is. So this is the location of the item in your inventory, right? So it just says, put it into the top left slot. Okay, because that, that, that was free. Okay, good. So this is uh, the mini demo of uh, basically the inventory system so far, where now, you know, we can pick up the items, uh, we can drop the items, and we can now start equipping and unequipping the items as well. Um, so perhaps what we'll do is look into the Java code on how, like, what, what does it actually look like, right? Uh, oh, yeah, and bear in mind that uh, these um, API calls that I've created here, so for example, for creating items, etc. I've also added them into the resource folder here. So uh, there's, for example, the item script, uh, the, this is the um, the body for the request, and I've also exported the Postman request. So if you want to try this locally, you know, just feel free to integrate these guys. Okay, so what we have here is the item class. So this refers to this table over here, right? It has item ID, item name, etc., category. Uh, I want to focus a little bit on the category here. Uh, so what we have is that this is just an abstract class, right? So item is an abstract class. Item on its own is not very useful for you. You need to know what kind of item is it? Is it a weapon? Is it a consumable, like a potion? Is it armor, like a chest piece, a helm slot, etc.? And you evaluate it using the category field, right? So we've introduced this uh, JSON property. Uh, it's stored in uh, MongoDB, so it's stored uh, as this JSON bison thing. Uh, so it's a category field. And uh, we can basically specify this thing, JSON type info. We say that it's an existing property and the property is called category. So it's uh, over here. And then you can specify the subtypes. So what this means is that if that category field is equal to this name, then serialize it into this class. That's what it means, right? So if the category is equal to consumable, then that means it's a consumable type. If it's a weapon, it's a weapon class. So at the moment, I haven't really put anything uh, specific in here, uh, but this is pretty powerful technique because what we can start doing is um, you know, basically putting custom logic into consuming the data differently. So as well as the um, category field, the other important one is tags. So each item should have a list of tags. Tags are basically maps of data. So they have a name and a value field, right? So if you look into uh, the create items, you'll find that uh, these tags have different values. So one of them could say damage, right? So if you're a weapon uh, object, you will know that you want to consume the damage parameter, right? And then if you're a shield, for instance, you want to consume the armor parameter. If you're a consumable item like a potion, then you're looking for like health or mana, whatever. Uh, you're looking for specific tags of different values, right? So that way we can sort of keep the system scalable. And instead of sort of creating a different column for each one of your properties, you can have this generic one that is extensible and expandable, right? So this makes the system quite scalable in the future. And really it's uh, just using these two fields here, the category to determine uh, the object that you are and the tags to contain all of the parameters for that. So uh, the other ones are sort of minor that we'll cover la later on, you know, values like sold value in the shop or something, right? Um, item name, you know, just for the description, etc. Config is not currently in use, uh, so potentially I'll uh, get rid of it. But if we need extra information for Unreal Engine to process this data, perhaps I'll add it to the item config. Um, because the tags, I wanted to keep them specifically for game logic. But if we needed something specifically to, you know, like, 
uh, decide which uh, mesh to use, right? Like I'll probably put them into the item config. And that's what I did here, right? Like for example, the icon to use in the inventory or the mesh to use. Uh, but really I've uh, actually used the item ID to um, evaluate this runtime in Unreal Engine. So there's multiple ways, like I say, to do this. Perhaps I'll deprecate this field later on, uh, but I'll sort of make that decision a bit later in case it does become useful. So that's essentially the item and uh, the item types uh, that we extend from it. So that really refers to uh, the items and uh, these categories over here. Also equipped items and uh, these slots, they follow the same sort of narrative. So if I find equipped items table here, you can see that it's really pretty much identical, right? Uh, the main difference is that some of these items will not be uh, equipped, right? Maybe like, for instance, uh, arrows or something, right? If you have a bow, uh, you've got a consumable like potion, you, you don't really need a equipped slot for it. So they are following sort of almost, they're essentially almost mirrored, right? But there are some differences and um, that's kind of what we've got right now, right? So um, the equipped items just have the character name. so who are who, who these items belong to right the, the character the item instance uh, to refer to the actual item and the category of that item is it like a, a weapon slot is it a shield slot belt slot etc there is a uh, one part which uh, i haven't yet decided on how to expand but like the ring ring slot so you can have two slots of the same type so i'll um, basically deal with that probably in the next episode i'll have a think of what's the best way of dealing with duplicates and also i don't currently support for instance the two-handed weapons right so that's something else that's uh, to do but basically this uh, method will support it which you know is the purpose of uh, this extensible system so perhaps the last thing that i'll show you is uh, the demo of what we had previously and the intention of the next video as well so we had this inventory system so we can populate the items i've also just made them a little bit larger so we can see the icons a little bit better i think there, there'll need to be a bit more improvements uh, but as before we can click the item which drops the item so you can see it populated there i click spacebar to pick it up uh, what i'll probably look to do is uh, make it on a double click you equip the item so i'll remove the functionality when you click to drop and then also when you right click maybe there'll be a little menu uh, to either equip or the drop drop the item you know as usually you'll have a sub menu when you right click uh, when you equip the item should disappear from uh, the inventory here it should appear on your equipable slots so basically one of these slots um, ar around the the sides and also we should be able to unequip the item so perhaps double click it or whichever like uh, maybe I'll, I'll see if i can do the drag and drop you know i think that would be pretty cool uh, but you know i'm not 100 percent sure how to do that yet to be honest so let's see if i spot anything good uh, but that that will be the aim of the next video so essentially being able to equip and unequip these items and um, yeah i think that's it basically for for this video i think i've covered everything here so any questions do ask um, i could try and basically cover a couple more details in um, one of the following videos so uh, let's see how it goes but otherwise yeah best of luck and see you next time cheers